I search the world But it couldn't fill me And man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And you put me back together now every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Now I'm not afraid To show you my weakness All my failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Yeah. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory And you're the only one who can You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes and you turn shame into glory And you're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies And you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Lord, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you there's nothing nothing is better than you lord there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you there's nothing Nothing is better than you. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You 
turn seas into highways You're the only one who cares You're the only one who cares You're the only one who I want to offer you today a very special gift. The Bible says second only to salvation, the most generous, kind, powerful, and life-giving gift you will ever receive. The Bible calls this being filled or refilled or refreshed or soaked in the Holy Spirit. If you've ever experienced what I'm talking about, it is as if Jesus himself is right there with you, more real than the person sitting next to you. And I have shared the details of what I'm about to share with you today with numerous people in Liberty Church. And I have had people who've been Christians for 20, 30 years just have tears of joy in their eyes. Oh, that would be the sweetest gift my church could ever give me. It's the second half of what I want to cover today, but the first half kind of lays the background. Uh, our church handed out two weeks in a row, I also emailed out a document called COVID, Calling Out Vision Individually Developed, because COVID was a hurricane, and a hurricane just completely can reestablish everything of who you are. So the hurricane first came in, and COVID tore down more than anything in over 100 years, every structure in our lives, every spiritual structure, every soul structure, every family structure, every social structure, every entertainment structure, and every economic structure was, was completely torn down. And when there's this kind of crisis, that crisis becomes an opportunity. When everything is torn down, you get a chance to really reassess. And that's why in this document, I shared that I have seen more and greater miracles in the last year than in almost 50 years of being a Christian. It's been the most transformational, shocking, and wonderful year of my life. So what COVID did is COVID said, okay, if everything's going to be torn down, now is the best time in all of our lifetimes, whether you're 15 or 85, to stop and ask the hard questions. And those hard questions are, if it's all torn down, how are you going to build back better. Each of these things that are in your life, do you want them back? Do you want them back in the same form? Do you want new things? And, and most of all, where do you prioritize? Where do you start? So for us, obviously, as Christians, we start with Jesus. We start with Luke 20, verse 17, which says, Jesus is the cornerstone. And when we're passionately in love with Jesus, what the, that word cornerstone means that this is the one stone in the building that they lay that one first, and it's so perfectly aligned that all the other stones are all in perfect alignment because of that stone. So we start and we say, if my heart is burning on fire for Jesus, then my schedule, my jobs, and my finances will all eventually come into alignment. If my heart is burning on passionately in love with Jesus, then my soul and my family and my emotions will all eventually line up because of the cornerstone. So here's my question. I'm kind of just briskly giving an opening here. Stay with me, but it's pretty simple. So we're in a season of reassessment, and everything's been torn down, but spiritually, if we're going to reassess, 
What are our measuring sticks? How do we reassess? What are we looking for? And so are we looking for a better worship experience or more fellowship or maybe better teaching, children's ministry, maybe more convenience or comfort or people of the same age? What is it that we're looking for? Because everybody feels it, but we need markers. So what is our, 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 how do we assess or reassess the steps we are taking spiritually. Now, now I'll, I'll be going kind of brisk here so that I can intentionally pause. And I would beg you to listen to me carefully what I'm about to say. I'm about to give you, what I'm about to share with you is the single compass for everything you ever do spiritually. It's what Jesus said, what the Bible said, there's no doubt. Every, every step you ever take, you want to measure it by how does it measure in this test. I'm going to say it two ways. First of all, it's called the eternal law of regret. Every step I take spiritually, when I stand before the King of Kings, will it be something that I was glad or sad? Will I look back and go, oh, I'm so happy. I played that video game for 7,000 hours. How will my eternal law of regret? But I have a, I have a sweeter and even more specific and more accurate way, because Jesus said it greatly. The real measuring stick of how I will respond when I stand before Jesus. Jesus gave it to us in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. He says, everything I do today, when I stand before Jesus, will I be able to say that it caused me to love the Lord my God forever and ever with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength and all my mind, and to love others more than I love myself. And so everything we do, as we reassess, we say, okay, if I, if I change this habit, if I went to this location, if I went to this church, will this cause me to love Jesus with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love others more than I love myself? That's the only measuring stick. So in this pause time, I want to read something to you that I wrote in this calling out vision individually developed document. And the reason these words are very important, I'm not reading almost anything else from this document, but I want to hear these words. I said, as a pastor, I have always had my four highest desires for every Liberty member. They have never wavered for four plus decades, for 41 years. And they're based, by the way, on the law of regret and the law of Mark 12, 30, and 31. And they never will waver. I'm going to give you the only four things you want to assess in your life spiritually. Because these are the only four things that are absolutely guaranteed. Somebody say guaranteed. Guaranteed, guaranteed to cause you to know that you know that you know that you will stand before him and say, Lord, I know that every year of my life I loved you more deeply from my heart and my mind and my strength. And I loved others with your love more than I love myself. These are guaranteed. These are guaranteed highways. Everything else is a swamp of confusion. So these four things are very simple. Number one is daily rich time in God's word with accountability. Now in this one, I said in this document, the reason this past year was such a supernatural thing is because this past year I gave, there's seven factors why this past year went from, let me just give background here. I want, I want to say a phrase that a lot of people don't understand. People talk about the grace of God, but how much are you aware that the grace of God is tied to excellence? The grace of God throughout the, the scriptures, in David's, in every in Peter's life, Paul's life, and throughout the scriptures, the grace of God, God waits until we reach a certain point of excellence and then his grace is poured out. So in practical terms, for 40 years, I tried hundreds of ways, some of them for decades, to find a way to make it easy, enjoyable, and effective for everyone to have a, a, a daily time in the word with someone else where they were sharing the word daily that was sustainable that they could do for the rest of their life. And you know what my success rate was? Less than 5%. And I tried everything. I'm vigorous. I'm creative. I'm a pit bull. And for 40 years, but when COVID came and everything got torn apart, God brought the last few pieces and everything that had been uphill for 40 years all of a sudden was downhill. Why? Because we reached the point of excellence that what was released. 
grace was released. So here's the seven factors that came together this past year. End times, everybody knew they were out of time. COVID kind of woke everyone up. The caffeine of a one-minute video. We discovered that if you're going to read the one-year Bible every day, you just need this enthusiastic, silly, cheerful, interesting person just to talk for 45 seconds and go, oh, there's something I hadn't thought of, and then you can read your word. The ease of social media, the reminder of church testimonies every week, the ease of just sending a one-sentence text, and now watch the heart. See the guy's now going downhill? Watch his heart. The accountability of a partner. What's his heart doing? It's beating. And he's going downhill. And under his bike is an arrow. What's that arrow say? 20 years sustainability. He now has, he knows that if he drops any of these seven factors, it's going to be uphill again. But if he keeps all seven factors, he knows that for the rest of his life, for her life, it's going to be E-A-S-Y easy to have li- and listen the word changes us not our effort not our sweat and and the living word will come through them every day and he's looking ahead going i want to stand before jesus i'm gonna say lord i loved you more every day every year because your word flowed through me and i loved others so grace was released we reached a point of excellence number two Somebody say the Bible says. says. You see, um, and again, I'm going to talk to you about 5% versus 85%, but let me just give the background briefly and and also the struggles. I know, you know, and anyone who's ever read the Bible, I wrote this document called Church. How important is it biblically to be deeply involved in a healthy Bible-believing church? So I'm going to share the before and after. Just stay with me on the before. The Bible is fiercely clear that the easiest way to increase your love for Jesus is to serve faithfully in a church. And the reason why is because Jesus said, I will build, what's that word? My church. And, And number two, I want you to write this down where it says, what's the solution? Number two, write down, take care of my, write down the word lambs. Because Jesus said to Peter three times, Peter, do you love me. If you do, serve my local church. Take care of my lambs. Matthew 25, 40, whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done for me. So the thing about the church is Jesus says, it's my church. And and, and John the Baptist said this way, he must increase, I must decrease. And when you serve in a local church, it's never about you. Now, you may have your ministry outside the local church, but believe it or not, when you have your ministry, you increase and he decreases the longer you have your ministry. But when you serve in the local church, you just, it's all about Jesus. And the longer you serve, the more it becomes about Jesus. And it's just the family. And whenever, do you know, when I wrote this, do you know that every single book in the New Testament says that the easiest way to know you'll be right with Jesus and you love Jesus, serve in a local church. And it says that if ever you stray from the church, it's never about the church, you've lost your love for Jesus. And there are eight books in the New Testament that that's the only reason the book was written just to say serve in the local church. Because the church is the one place where it's not about me. And by the way, when Jesus said, I, this, is, this is kind of fun here, you ready for this? Jesus said, I will build my church. Guess what the word church means in the Greek? Are you ready? It means church. It means exactly what we have today. I got news for you. All the puffy, false theologians, well, church is not just us meeting in here. Yes, it is. Church, you know, church is wherever you talk to God and church is wherever we go. No, it's not. It's not. You know what the word church means in the Greek? It means the gathering of believers to worship, study, pray, and support each other. That's the word ecclesia. That's what it means. So when you say, well, I'm the church wherever I go. No, you're not. The church is this, and Jesus is real possessive about. So that's what we all had before. So that was the before, and but getting people to understand, just serve in church. We live in a time when people turn away from church, and the first thing they do is be flippant about church, not knowing they're being flippant about Jesus, and the law of regret is going to crush them. But then this past year, are you ready for this? Along came small group weekend. 
And in small group weekend, for the first time, people have this 20-year sustainability because you see, all of a sudden, it's all about Jesus. By the way, 1 Timothy 3.13 says this. This is a beautiful verse. 1 Timothy 3.13 in the Greek says, servants who serve well in the local church have the most confidence when they stand before Jesus. You gotta look up that verse. This is a great verse. So, so this whole thing of along comes small group weekend, which wouldn't have happened without COVID. And I, 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 I talk to my staff and I say, look at this person, look at this person. Look at, they're just sweet, faithful people. And they're going, okay, how do I serve in a local church? I'm not ready to you know, do this and I can't lead a ministry. And we just say, could you just come once a month and just show up in a small group and just love the people in your small group. And they go, wow, yeah, especially since it's like doing service and it's just so easy. That's all Jesus wants of you. Just come to church, come to your small group and love those people. And that's what they did in the book of Acts. And, and, and now let me ask you this, could you do that for 20 years? Well, sure I could. Well, every year, could it get easier and sweeter? Well, yeah, it could. And could you begin to see how you would stand before the Lord and Jesus would say, you love, when you love my church, you are loving me. So all of a sudden, something that's been hard became easy. Number three, we're going to cover to personally lead one to three people to Jesus every year. We're going to cover that in the coming weeks. But I want to get to number four, to be regularly Refresh, soaked in the Holy Spirit. This is the main one I'm going to talk about this week and in two weeks. So let me give you the pragmatic, specific facts. This coming January 2022, six months from now, specifically the three-week dates of January the 8th through the 29th, the opportunity to have one to two hours every night for 21 nights in a row of five to 20 times of extended, gentle, anointed hands. What we'll have is during the 21 days of fasting, we'll have about a third of the pews in the back. And if you come up, we're going to have worship on all the screens, just video worship. And if you're anywhere in the front two-thirds, standing, kneeling, sitting, that means you're asking one of the 40 or 50 pastors here to lay hands on you. But let's say you got a vision or you want to write something down the word for the Lord, you just go to the back or you just want to worship privately in the back. But if you come to the front, then, then five, eight different times, people, some will lay hands on you for two minutes. Some will lay hands on you for, for five minutes and just praying and filling the spirit of God all over you for 21 days in a row so that you are filled and refreshed, soaked, and drenched, refilled, and swimming in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in the third week of this three-week uh, sermon series on vision, I'm going to teach more on this thing about being filled. I'm going to teach also for two weeks in September on the Holy Spirit. Also, I'm going to teach in December before we start back to fasting. But did you know there are five Bible analogies on being filled with the Spirit? And they're very textural and alive, and, and, and you can taste them, literally. One is water, which we've used already. One is fire, which we've used already, that your heart is on fire for the Lord. One is wind. You ever walked out on an afternoon or a fall day, and, and you can breathe? You know what the most common one is? To be filled with the Spirit is to be skunk drunk. Just, ah, I'm gone, baby. Just gone. And the last one is oil, because oil, listen, the very nature of the Holy Spirit is gentleness. The very nature of the Holy Spirit is patience and kindness and sweetness. That's why this is not going to be a rush thing and a frantic thing, and you get one second, lay hands on you, and that's it. This is going to be, take your time, wait, listen, when was the last time? You were so filled with the Spirit that you walked around for 24 hours where Jesus was more real to you than the wall you were leaning against. There's nothing sweeter. Now, I want to close by asking you some questions, and I'll tell you what the answer is. The answer to these, these questions I'm going to say is, I have absolutely no idea. When you say it, I want you to punch the middle where I want you to say, I have absolutely no idea. Can you all say that? So here's the two questions. First, I'm going to give you what you will know. Well, what's going to, what would it be like for you personally, 21 days of fasting in January, having hands laid on you every night? Well, I will tell you what you will, what you will discover. You will discover, everyone will discover that 10 times people lay hands on you, you'll have five different anointings. Do you know what it's like to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit? It's like 
saying, I want to learn the different foods on the earth. It's not just going to Golden Corral. Imagine if you went to Greece, and then you went to Uganda, and then you went to China, and then you went to Russia, and then you went to Venezuela. If you wanted your palate to taste, guess who created all those unique foods? The Holy Spirit. And if you want to learn every unique personality, I mean, just look around you. There's unique personalities everywhere. All of that is created by the Holy Spirit. So if 100 people lay hands on you, you'll have 30 different anointings. And you'll quickly learn that there is not an anointing of the Holy Spirit. There's hundreds of different aspects because it is the Holy Spirit who is the creator who creates all the things. And you're going to go, wow, there's so much more to this anointing of the Holy Spirit. Second thing you'll discover is all your restlessness is gone. And I know that when you're in church, you get hit with demonic waves of restlessness. I know. I can see it in your eyes. I'm good to go. I got to go. And I know why. It's because of food and media. I want to eat and I want to go play. But when you're fasting, there's no media to go home to and no food to go home to. And you'd be shocked how the restlessness leads with that. You're just here and it's an hour and a half. You didn't even notice it. But the best part is every single one of you with an oil that goes deeper every night, we'll find yourselves more passionately in love with Jesus. It'll be greater than any husband and wife have ever known at their wedding. It'll burn in you. And yes, there'll be visions and healings and words and pictures and directions and sensations and electricity. And there'll be all these miracles. But that's not what's going to dominate you. You're going to walk here going, Jesus, I love you. Well, how's it going to happen in your life, personally? What's those five words again? I have absolutely... Now, think about this. You are veterans. You've seen it all and done it all. And yet, I just described something that you truly have absolutely no idea. You know what that means? That means that I'm offering you the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, you're saying, I've never tasted anything like that. Second question is, how will you change? How will you be different? This two things I know. One is you will change more every day, and it will be permanent. You see, our soul is not a box. Our soul is like this honeycomb. And that honeycomb, if you know anything about honeycombs, there are layers within layers within layers and layers and layers. And every layer has sections within sections within sections. So you could take that honeycomb, and you could dip it for an hour in oil. And pull it out, and it would look like it was drenched, but if you cut it open, what would you find in the middle? Dryness. Dryness. You could dip it for 10 hours after five days of coming up here, and if you cut it open, you would still find dry sections in the middle. So what's going to happen is those first few times, you're going to say, I'm just so drenched, I'm just so drenched. But the oil, remember, God is gentle, he's kind, he's sweet. And there's going to be different flavors and different feelings. And sometimes it's just going to be dizziness. Sometimes it's going to be uh, awakening. Sometimes it's going to be, 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 be healing of scars. And there's going to be different processes and thoughts and words and visions and, and, and dreams and passions that's going to come. And it's just going to be different layers. And, and after, I'll tell you this, after five, seven days, you're going, to, you're going to have bad days during the day, but you handle bad days completely differently than you have before because the presence of the Lord. And by the sixth or seventh day, the way you handle life is going to be so different that you won't even remember. And by the 10th or 11th day, you're going to be so sad that this is over in 10 days and you're just like, I, I don't ever want to go back. So I know that you'll change and I know that it'll be permanent and I know that you're going to change more every day, but how will you individually change five words, I have absolutely no idea, but I knew that you'll change. Do you know the only other time this model's ever been used in history was at a revival in the early 1900s called Azusa Street. It's the only other time they used this model and it changed. So a triple star wrap up point, I want you to grab your pens. When you get drenched, soaked, and refilled with the spirit, we get people passionately in love with Jesus. I'm, listen, where did this model come from? COVID. COVID ripped everything apart. COVID says, okay, Pastor Stefan and I met, and I think, I, I think I, I, honestly, I could pastor for 15 more years, but I don't think it's the Lord because it's not my church. I just feel like the Lord said, Stefan's ready. Step aside. It's his church. But if I only got five years left, I want to bring everything I got. And 
So what can I bring? And, and if Stefan's going to take all the heavy stuff that I don't really want to do anymore, then like, what could I do that would be just so, what gift could I bring? And it's like, wow, this would be so fun. And, and it just sounds so easy. If we got people passionate in love with Jesus, things like Bible partners and serving often happen automatically. And I've got to, listen, you've got to read the Bible and I've got to serve in church. Those are not requests, are they? But when you get drunk in the Lord, drunk in love, I've got to, write this down, becomes I want to. I want to serve. I want to read the Bible. It completely transforms us. Now let me ask a favor. Next week, week two, I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you can't read the word under opportunity, here's what it says. We're not going to wait until January to start the laying on of hands. I'm in the middle of a very extended fasting season. And in the coming week and a half, I'm going to be taking all my pastors on a private power ministry time. And my pastors are ready now to lay hands on people. So the opportunity to have laying on hands, I'm presenting to you next weekend here in church. So here's what I'm asking. Many of you have been waiting to build up your courage to be back in church. Now is the time. Next weekend, come to church. If I could, off, if someone offered you $5 million to be in church next week, would you be in church? What I'm going to offer you next week is greater than $5 million. You will see when you get here. So be in church next week because things are happening, and I'm going to give you an opportunity beyond your wildest imagination. But now I want to wrap up, and, and i got to tell you, in your small group, this, these questions are really going to stir you here. I want you to pick one of these five and share why this thought impacted you in a positive way. Number one, COVID is a crisis that God says build back better. Number two, the eternal law of regret is the most important hard question you could ever ask, but the answer is Mark 12, 30 and 31. What will cause me to love Jesus more? Number three, there are seven reasons why we're seeing supernatural success. In other words, grace is something that often is not released until we reach a certain point of excellence. Number four, small group weekend is another one of those grace has released excellence where all of a sudden for the first time I could see myself serving in church for 20 years and it being easy and just loving serving in church. And number five, when we get drenched, soaked and refilled with the Holy Spirit, I've got to becomes I want to. Lead us, Lord. Lead us into a new season, a fresh season of being filled with everything of you. In Jesus' precious name, all God's people said, amen.